I Wiener see. dogs. <laughs> yep. Yes, indeed. That they uh, are. Well, that'll appeal to Dr. Caspari, uh, who's here with us. He's, <laughs> yes. he's a physician, staying with John. Okay, straight from Germany, I might add. Yes, he is. Uh, and uh, so, you know what? You know the uh, the, the Wiener uh, did uh, start in Germany. Yes. <laughs> Wiener Schnitzel yes, too, uh, yes. which is great. And uh, and uh, uh, the, the, what, what else? Frankfurters. Frankfurters. I Frankfurt. Yes. I guess we started making them first. <laughs> Okay, Leslie uh, Fletcher helping with us here. She's going to try to unravel some of the, the, the insanity of, of, of when you have to get into a nursing home and the family's falling apart, the money is uh, evaporating, and the, the, you've got to get in somewhere. Tell me, now there are different levels of nursing homes. You can go to a home where it's just uh, mostly seniors. A senior center, you can go to a place where you do get assisted living, the so-called, where they help you out a lot, check your pills, and... Then yes, sometimes indeed. The, the, then, the, then you have the skilled nursing yes. uh, center. What yes. do you call it? the center there? Well, they're skilled nursing facilities. Facility, okay. Right. Which is the absolute where you work, and yes. there are many of them around. Yes. Uh, I believe the Chautauqua County Home probably qualifies, doesn't it? Yes, the Chautauqua yeah. County Home is a skilled nursing facility, as is the absolute care. We have There's an absolute care in Dunkirk. Uh, there are some over in Jamestown, like Lutheran Social Services. Uh, the Heritage Group, which has got Heritage Park, Heritage Village, and Heritage Green. Uh, these are all skilled nursing facilities. Yeah, well, these are the highest level you could go right. other than being in a hospital yes. itself. Um, and uh, it's much cheaper than the hospital, but even at a hundred grand, grand a clip, yeah. <laughs> you wonder what, 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 what's the yeah. time? Tell yeah, me, what's what, reasonable. Is, what is the difference between these, say, three or four levels okay. of care? Um, if, uh, a let's say adult apartments you have um, like on Spring Street uh, the apartments there or the star apartments uh, these are places for senior citizens only uh, they are prorated uh, what you pay depends as to what you make um, so everybody's going to pay a little bit differently um, and that's for people who like to have neighbors checking on them. It, it's a wonderful place because there's a lot of camaraderie there. Everybody checks on everybody else to make sure they're okay. Um, but there's no real nursing involved. You can get home health nursing there, but there's nobody necessarily there that's professional. It's essential, you're living on your own. Exactly, totally. but with friends and neighbors looking in on you. you. You're a little closer to your neighbors. Right, exactly. Do they exactly. eat together? Or? Uh, they can. They have a, a local uh, eatery down there uh -huh. in the kitchen. But they um, don't have communal dinners every day. No, no, like no, not at all. Yeah. Then you have your <laughs> adult care facilities. Those are for people who require a little bit more assistance. Uh, maybe for those who are still independent with going to the bathroom, getting dressed, but can't quite remember to take their medications, or maybe they just need a little extra help doing something. They're not quite capable to cook for themselves anymore. Places like Tanglewood Manor, uh, the WCA home, the St. Vincent's home, uh, the Loyalty and Fredonia place, things like that. They have uh, a little extra care, they have nurses there, they give you your medications, uh, they help the laundry, they do the cooking, um, and so and on and they, so forth. They eat communally together. Yes, they do eat all together. They have a large uh, <coughs> dining room and the food is prepared and, and uh, things of that nature. Uh, a skilled nursing facility is just that. You require a nursing skill at least once a day. Uh, you're in need of uh, physical or occupational therapy or speech therapy, um, or you've gotten to the point where you are total care because of a stroke, uh, you can't be cared for. Um, there are very specific rules as to uh, who uh, can go into a skilled nursing facility versus an adult care facility. Um, adult care facilities, you have to be independent in going to the bathroom. You can't be incontinent. Um, you have to uh, be able to walk from your room to the dining room, and it can be quite a long walk. Uh, so if they are no longer able to do those things, that's when they usually move from an adult care facility to a skilled nursing facility. And that's by law, not because that's what the adult care facility no. wants to do. Well, the state years ago, I've got to make a comment here, <coughs> was spending too much money on Medicaid, and a lot of, remember, half of Medicaid seniors goes to senior citizens, mm -hmm. and uh, much of it in, uh, in care in a, in a skilled nursing uh, facility. And um, 
because it's so hideously expensive because it's almost the same as a hospital. You have to have nurses there and everything. And the, the, many of them get oxygen, many of them bedridden. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's kind of just short of being in the hospital. So it's very expensive. All right, so um, the government said, well, now we could save state government, uh, New York State. We could save an awful lot of money if they just stopped taking people in these health care centers. So what they did was they capped the beds. You cannot add another bed to a health care center. You cannot, uh, to a uh, skilled nursing center. You cannot build a new skilled nursing center. No new beds. And this was 35 years ago. And think of how many more seniors we have now today. Right. So the, the pressure's on. Starting to, yes, indeed. Yeah, and of course, yeah. on, the, on the other hand, the Congress has said, well, let's stop paying so much to the skilled nursing yes. facilities for their seniors there. Uh, you know, basically, Congress, between fostering inflation and not giving the seniors a cola for their pensions and their Social Security, are starving them to death. But they're also taking away all their health care. Good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. We have a Good caller. Good morning. Okay. Thank you. What's up? Well, many of us are watching, and we have parents that are older. And I was wondering, what could you give us as advice for helping them prepare for the future, for instance, long term care insurance? Uh, should they Give away houses? their money to their kids right now. <laughs> um, what you need to do, uh, if we're lucky, we, I mean, we all plan on growing older. And the fact is, and with today's medicine, most of us will grow older. We have to understand that there's a time that we will get sick. Uh, falls are not unheard of. Uh, the thing that you need to do is you need to have an honest and open discussion with your parents about the fact that they are getting old. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with uh, the children of patients who say, well, I always promised them I'd never put them in a nursing home. You know, 50 years ago, that was a legitimate pr uh, promise because you had more than one family living at home. They were able to care for them, and quite honestly, people didn't live quite as long. And in today's economy, or the lack thereof, um, you have to work. There's no way you can stay home and care for an invalid parent. It's just, it's just not possible uh, unless you are part of the 1% that owns 90% of the country. Um, in which case you have no problems. Um, so what you need to do is you need to have an honest conversation. Uh, if you do not want your parents to lose their home, uh, there's only one thing to do, and that is you need to get them to get the, the home out of their name and put it into a trustworthy person's name, uh, but give them the right to live there for life. Uh, the look back period right now for Medicaid is five years. It's probably going to go up to seven, and, and sometimes they even look back ten years. Um, they should have Medicaid in charge of looking for illegal aliens because you can't hide anything from them. Uh, you, they, they look to make sure that no money was gifted to anybody, nothing was given away. It's all about the money with Medicaid, uh, especially because their funds keep getting cut. They have no choice but to uh, look to take. Uh, they are paying, but very poorly, uh, to the skilled nursing facilities, and it is really the only long-term care insurance that will pay for a skilled nursing facility. There you go. Okay, and uh, I will also make sure, first of all, as you, she had on a point, give your house to your kids. Uh, you got to do this five years ahead of time At now. Least. now. Uh, it used to be three. First of all, there's none. Then it was three. Then it was five. Now seven. Apparently, uh, most seniors are going to die. In uh, obviously, they're going to be bankrupt, and they're going to pick your bones. So they'll be lying out there drying in the <laughs> desert. So that's what you'll get because of the government. So uh, thank you, government, for taking care of seniors. In the meantime, uh, except that one percent that own ninety percent of all the wealth in America, they they take care of themselves. Yeah, they're all right. Oh yes. Uh, they don't even worry about these things that you and I have to worry about. No. Uh, in the meantime, uh, be careful that you don't give your kids over $5 for Christmas because Medicaid will come and take it away. <laughs> Maybe that's a minor exaggeration, <laughs> but uh, give your money to your kids one way or another. And there's, 
Uh, you could uh, you could give it to grandchildren for college. Give it around. You're limited to twenty five thousand per pop, and then five thousand a year. So keep doing it. Get rid of the dough because you're going to lose it eventually. You're going to be on Medicaid, and they're going to suck you dry. Got a call. Good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Good morning, Reed. How are you? What's up? Um, my question is, if uh, say a person who is in a facility did not. Uh, designate a power of attorney or anything like that who becomes that if the person is still capable of making their own decisions you're perfectly capable of doing paperwork in the facility for power of attorney and especially health care proxy those are the two most important pieces of paper anybody you don't have to be a senior citizen you have to be over the age of 18 you should have a health care proxy a living will and a power of attorney um, and obviously they don't have to be the same person uh, but it should be somebody obviously that you trust uh, and w if you're going to choose somebody to be your health care proxy they need to be on the same page with you if you do not want anything done for you should you become uh, terribly ill uh, if you have a, se a severe stroke if you're found to be full of cancer uh, your heart's about to give away uh, they need to understand that they need to follow your wishes to have nothing done when your time comes. Uh, we're very lucky here with Chautauqua County. We have the uh, Chautauqua County Health Network where if you uh, send them a copy of your living will, they will put it online. It is accessible only to the nursing, uh, uh, the emergency departments and the ambulances. Uh, so that way they would know what your wishes are. You're talking living well, same as a yes. health care proxy in a sense, isn't it? In a sense, uh, it's a slightly different piece of paper. New York State actually does not re uh, recognize living wills, but what they do with them is they use them to <coughs> recognize intent. So if you write down on your living will, I don't want any feeding tubes, I don't want any IVs, I don't want any uh, antibiotics, but I do want lots of pain medicine, um, then that's fine, and that they will use that as that was your wish. Okay, let's let's clarify for the people, and I'm glad you brought that up. Living will is what you want done. Right. The health care, the state doesn't really recognize it, but they'll follow in the hospital usually because you, the, what you really need in New York State is a health care proxy. Yes. And this doesn't say much about what you want. You might, you might indicate in it that you, you don't well, want any, if you're terminal, you don't want right. any extra There stuff. are areas but actually let, let me, there. Let me okay. this. The one thing about the health care proxy is it selects a proxy, someone who will follow your orders. Right. And uh, you would make sure they know what they what you want, as she mentioned. Yes. And uh, your daughter, your son, your friend, your whoever it might be, you trust them. And so, if you're in a coma, and uh, you're gonna you 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 might last six months uh, like a vegetable, uh, they'll come in and say, pull the plug. Mm -hmm. That's what she wants. Right. He That's wants exactly. There you are. And one, uh, one final in New York question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, if you do not designate that, does the home or someone at there become that for you? If no, you became not at all. And that's the thing, because if you do not designate somebody, if it is not written down, the state of New York steps in, they're going to presume that you want everything done, and that's exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get the feeding tubes, you're going to get the IVs, you're going to get the works. And uh, CPR. Yes, <laughs> Another, yes, The craziest exactly. thing of all, you got somebody who's dying, terminally dead. Right. And under this situation, they have to give you re resuscitation yes. and bring you back to die. Right. Can't believe it. Go on, you're on. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to, to, to have these pieces of paper uh, done and designated. Again, if it's not done when you get to the nursing home, they can be done there as long as the person who is there is competent to do it. Okay. And you did mention a very important paper, equally important, the power of attorney, meaning yes. that your kids can't cash your checks. They cannot buy things, they cannot sign for you or anything unless they have a power of attorney. And as uh, this power of attorney has to be a special kind, so try to remember mm -hmm. this, a durable power of attorney. Meaning exactly. that when they're unconscious and totally out of it, it's still in effect. A regular power of attorney dies if you, if you can't uh, right. make your own decisions. Exactly. So, so get a durable power of attorney, get the health care proxy, and you can write on it whatever you want. And mm -hmm. it's also advisable, Leslie, mm -hmm. to put a second name on that. Sometimes yes. they can get the, your health care right. proxy yes. and uh, yeah. the other Well, there's person. places for always uh, your first choice and your second choice of health care proxy and power of attorney. 
uh, it is usually suggested that your uh, either one should live within four hours. If you live here in New York and your health care proxy is in California, it's not going to do you much good. Okay, we have a call. Let's take a okay. call. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. This beautiful morning and enjoy it because I guess the rain 